Welcome to worship today for August 30th, Pentecost, uh, Sunday of Pentecost number 13. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed your last week and that it has been a good and healthy time for you all. Um, thank you to all who might be joining us for the first time. There aren't any real notes on our worship for today, so let us just take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin with our call to worship. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends upon you, live in peace with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We sing now our opening hymn, Make Me a Servant.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing now our Kyrie, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. We continue with our prayer of confession. God of the way, you have shown us the way and the truth and the life through Jesus Christ. But we have made the faith into a list of rules. We have watered down the faith into a get into heaven admission ticket. We have made the faith about ourselves and our own needs and desires. Instead of following the example set by Jesus to love our neighbor as ourselves, to become last of all and servant of all, to serve others before ourselves. Guide us back to the way. Remind us of how the early followers of the faith came together and lived in community. May we reach out to others in our communities, seeking to meet the needs of those around us and sharing the love of Christ by example. In the name of Jesus, who continues to show us the way, the truth, and the life, we pray. Amen. In living for others, we find life. In loving others, we find the love of God. In seeking justice, we find and create peace. In finding Jesus, we find the example of how we are to live. Go loving Jesus, loving your neighbor as yourself, and live into the way of Christ. Know you are forgiven, loved, and restored. Amen. We sing now our canticle of praise, Awesome God. Now may the peace that passes all understanding be with you all. Let us take a moment to share that peace together.
We sing now our canticle of peace. Nothing can trouble. God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We sing now our scripture song, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Our first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 15. O Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound uncurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, if you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve me, serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people 
a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read our psalm, Psalm 26, together responsively. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me, and examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in, pro in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. We sing now our gospel acclamation, Take my life that I may be. taken from St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Welcome to worship. 
My name is Pastor Jerry Brakowski. Uh, I am one of the assistants to the bishop here in the Saskatchewan Synod, to Bishop Sid Haugen. And I thank you for uh, uh, letting us be into your worship space wherever you are as we gather together as God's people. You will have heard the gospel text already read in your worship service. And so it's on that gospel text from Matthew 16, 21 to 28, that I will be preaching this morning. So I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, take our lips and speak through them. Take our hands and work through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The theme that I'm going to focus on this morning in the lesson of the Gospel is the second part of the Gospel where Jesus and Matthew, or Jesus talks to the disciples about if you want to become my followers, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. And that's the theme that I want to focus on this morning. So what do you think? It means to hear those words, take up the cross, or pick up the cross and follow me. Any of we would ask that question this morning in your congregation, you would find that you would probably get a churchy response of some sort. You know, people might respond that, well, it means something about suffering uh, or forgiveness of sins. I think that's as well. But definitely, it's something we believe in. It's part of who we are as God's people. People are often hesitant to, to, to answer the question because they're so sure that it has to have a, a, be a theological response. It has to have the, the right answer because it's about one of those central items in our faith. At least that's how it seems, and I think, for many people. And of course, yes. The cross is central to us as people of God. I mean, think about your church. If you look around, you will see, if you have a spire, steeple, you will see on the top of that a cross. If you have a church sign, there is a cross beside it. There may be a cross on the side of your building, but there is no doubt that this is a church, and it is identified either by shape, but definitely because of the cross. And then if you go inside the building, you can see that I am this morning here at Bread of Life Lutheran Church in Regina, Saskatchewan. It's the church that is my home parish, where Pastor Stuart Miller is our pastor. But you can see that in the background is the altar and there's the cross. If you look closely, you'll see some other crosses even around. They, they, They are, if you will, everywhere because they are a part of who we are. And if you look at your hymnal, if you use the ELW, and even if you're still using the LBW, there is a symbol of the cross on it. We see it everywhere. So it doesn't doesn't take us long to figure out that the cross can be and is an important symbol for the Christian community and also for our faith. Not only is it a symbol on the building, I mean, we also wear crosses, either as a necklace. Clergy people often will wear a larger cross as part of their liturgical garb. And often it becomes a piece of jewelry that you fit a certain cross with the garb that you have. They have to fit. And I think this leads us almost to asking a question, and I want to focus on that as part of the homily this morning, that what is the difference between carrying the cross and wearing the cross? I would like to suggest that there is a definite difference because the cross is a reminder of Christ's death and resurrection and it says something to me as a child of God what Christ has done because of God's love for the world that God gave his son to die for me. If it is a witness to my faith, then it also says something about who I am, that I see this as part of my life. But is just saying something, is that enough? Should there not be more? Is wearing it enough? Should there not be more? 
You know, I've thought about this, and when, when you're a part of a congress, uh, conversation, in one way or another, you will hear people just talking about life and living, and they get to that point where sometime they, they may name something that has been a weight for them or has been painful and it's an ongoing, could even be sickness, it could be, you know, family or whatever. But often they end up saying, I guess that's my cross to bear. Well, what are they saying? I think often those, those comments reflect that somehow if they can identify that weight, whatever it is, that that then connects them in some way with Jesus and the cross that, of what his life was about. But is, is, that, is that really what, what it is? Yet upon some further reflection and thinking it through, often those things that we say are our crosses to bear, and for some, they may be very legitimate. I wouldn't dispute that at all. But sometimes they may even deal with family annoyances. When we allow that to happen, I think there is a, it's so very easy to trivialize the cross, to make it something that just is. Clayton Schmidt, in his commentary on this text, says that most of us, when we hear the phrase that we should take up the cross, I mean, we, we do that with some degree of gladness. I mean, because we know that's what we are called to do. We, as we have heard that, it's, it's not unusual. I mean, that's not against anything we believe. It's what we are called to do, to pick up the cross and follow. Those are Jesus' words, and they have weight. But often enough, it's like I've already said, it has to do with things that maybe are not that dear to us. You know, you know that church committee that you're serving on that nobody else wanted to serve on, and you're on, and it's it's the most boring committee on the congregation, and you uh, serve silently on the outside, but inside at least you say I'm doing my part. Is that what it is? Or we help help out the people who who annoy us, because you know in our mind that is bearing a burden. Schmidt goes on to say, he says, the list of little crosses is endless. See, to take up the cross is to deny oneself. It is not to safeguard my way of life by adding some action that will somehow fulfill what I think are my obligations as being a follower of Jesus. The problem is that we are pretty poor at cross-bearing. Now, to be fair, I think that might have been the same place where, this is where the disciples were. For they had seen crosses. They knew what they were used for. I mean, they had witnessed the horrid anguish that these tools that was used for killing. It was a horrible death. And we know that they would tell us that people would die by suffocation. It, it was a horrible thing to use for death. Yes, for the disciples, the thought of carrying a cross was a life and death matter. And yes, as we know, many of the disciples died because they followed the Messiah and their life was life of being murdered. For us, I think, to bear a cross can sometimes become almost a figurative idea. I mean, no one really expects to die in bearing the cross, carrying the cross. Even denying ourselves at times seems too much to ask. Because we, we aren't very good at doing either one, I think. Now, if we follow Jesus, we will be seriously called to bear certain crosses and to lose hold of our lifestyle. And maybe to whatever we decide, or whatever for us is about our life, that may also be in jeopardy. Yet in all our weakness and human-mindedness, it is Jesus' own death that enables us to do what we cannot do. Living as we are in this time of so much upheaval, how does this play out then in our lives? 
to take up your cross and follow can be difficult for some people. Think about those people who are living in a culture that pressures people to be subordinate to others in a way that is not self-affirming. Douglas Hurd or Hare says in the series, the interpretation on the series on the Gospel of Matthew, he says, and I quote, properly understood, the saying to pick up your cross and follow does not call for self-effacement, but for affirmation of oneself as a child of God. The weight of this statement does not exhort martyrdom, but a fearless following of a crucified Lord. It means to truly walk the way of the cross in one's daily life, daily life. To think about how we live and how we, what we say and what we do, that they are consistent. David Lowe's reminds us that faith is a full contact participation sport. I really like that image. Because you can't carry your cross from the sidelines, he says. You need to get involved. You can't know God by sitting on the sidelines. You, you, got, you need to take a risk. As David says, you got to get off the couch. It means involvement to carry the cross. It means that it is a part of your daily life, as we've said. Caroline Lewis, again, someone we all know and have used and appreciate very much the work that she does says that to carry one's cross is to carry the choices and burdens and realities of a life that has made a commitment. A commitment to to a way of life that is committed to bring about the kingdom of God here and now. In these last weeks, we have heard Jesus with his parables and all that saying, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is breaking in. And when we make a commitment to live as people of God, of carrying the cross and following, it is about a commitment that is important to us, that that makes a statement of our life. I would like to suggest that to live a committed life like this is about continuing to grow in our faith and making a difference, making a difference to grow where you are planted. That's the call for us as people of God. May that journey that you are on, may you be mindful that that is how we make a difference for people in this world need to know and need to see that the good news is lived out in each of our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. We sing now our hymn of the day, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song.
we continue with our affirmation of faith. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and therefore discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, Pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding, that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promised to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick, especially today we remember Vanola Anderson, Anita Holtz, Darlene Stoner, Janet Pleisted, Art Balkan, the family of Pauline Litke, and all those that we name now either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Today, too, we would remember Doreen Mahaffey, who is now in palliative, and we pray that you would be with her and guide her home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring rec reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. All your many blessings are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, 
nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Amen. I'd like to thank everybody for again tuning in. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who was involved today in our service, for Lois, for playing our music, for Prema who was able to uh, film the music this week and for next, and also for those who sat in and listened and even sang along. Uh, with uh, with Prema on the Thursday when they filmed the hymns, that's always that was I hope fun for you. It was great for Prema as well to be singing, even if it was from a far distance with with other people. Um, I'd like to thank Betty for for filming um, the the liturgy portions this week uh, and for next week as well. Also um, for this Sunday, I I hope that as you approach the beginning of school. For those who are going back, it's done with a sense of, of, of some peace, and I pray that it goes well for you. A uh, reminder that although I have another week of holiday at this point, if there is an emergency, by all means, you can call me. Um, and if not, we'll, I'll be back in office next week, um, September 8th, and uh, we'll, we'll catch up then. But for now, blessings on, your, on this first week of school, and I hope all goes well. Blessings all. Let us sing our sending song, Shout to the Lord. <laughs> 